so you can kind of abuse the J37. Hello guys and girls, I hope the day is finding you well. So what we're having a look at today is the J37 tape machine from Waves. The J37 is the tape machine taken from Abbey Roads. So that's where it's emulated from. It's not exclusive to Abbey Roads. You know, it's um, it's basically a take on the Struders machines, but it's the Abbey Roads one, which was specifically made to them, as you can see by the logo on here. We're just gonna go over some of the features and some of the uses for it. So this is a instrumental called Rhapsody. You can download this from warriorsoundbeats.com if you are so inclined to hear the whole part. But I used the J37 on the piano section. And most interestingly, on the latter four bars of an eight bar run, which is this section just here. And the J37's what's adding uh, a bit of the character to the piano sound there. So just for context, we'll have the J37 off and then we'll reintroduce it and hopefully you'll just hear a really subtle change, but a pleasant change. Yeah, so it's adding a bit of distortion. It gives it a bit more top end. It Essentially, it distorts and adds some extra harmonics in there and just gives it a bit of a feel and ever so slightly moving with the wow and the flutter there. So let's have a look at what it does. The whole top section of this plugin doesn't really do anything apart from give us a little bit of visual feedback as to whether the plugin is engaged. So when you press play, the tape reel is move. And the other thing to take note of is it will also have the type of tape you're using. This will change up here depending on which formula brand we're using. The bottom section's where we start. And as we just mentioned, we've got formula right at the bottom here. And the formula is the basically the type of tape that was used. There are a few different clarifications in number. And, and they've taken the 888, 811 and 815 formulas and emulated those, which you can look up. They just tended to be the most popular ones. Um, not every single one was released. Lots were manufactured and then never really put into production. These are the ones that were regularly used on records through like the 50s, 60s and 70s. Each one adds a slightly different character and a little bit of different tonality to the sound. And honestly, it's really just a preference as to what you like when you're playing it back and what sounds good to you. So just moving over from formula, we've got speed. So this is the rate at which the tape turns. So you know, tape was obviously a limited format. You only had a run of a few minutes. And one thing you could do was slow the tape down so it ran at half the speed, giving you double the recording time. But this did change the overall sound. The, the 7.5 IPS was effectively a little bit grittier uh, and less detailed in the recording, whereas 15 tend to be the most pristine recording you can get. It just gives a slight difference in the sound, and when combined with the formula, it gives us a few different options we can mix together and create. Hopefully here you can really hear how it gets a lot more gritty when it's on the 7.5, especially with the 811 formula. Next we've got our 
in and out levels. I tend to leave these linked because it just makes life a little bit easier, but you can push the level out more than in depending on what you like. Now this correlates nicely with the meters at the bottom. I find this plugin sounds best when the meters are trigger triggering somewhere between the minus seven and minus three. That's just for me. I find that gives the best, nicest profile, but some people like to really drive it into the red. Next, we've got the bias, and the bias is kind of like an EQ weighting, whether we're gonna favor low end or high end. Um, normal is the flattest response you could get, and then you've obviously got plus three and plus five, and it changes the overall tonality. When we go and combine this with our formula, our speed, the distortion from the in and out, it gives us a really wide range of how we can adjust the sound. Something you can make use of with the bias is if you've got two or three different audio sources with the J37 on, have them all on a different bias and they will have a different frequency area that stands out. If you start doing that with different biases, different formulas as well, they all have a, a different peak, a different key frequency area that stands out and can it really help you balance a track out and um, get some areas sounding really good. Just a and B and get the best sounding one you can per sound. And then when you put them all together, it just works really, really well. Next over on the right, we've got the ability to use the tape as a delay. And thanks to Waves Ingenuity, we've also got a sync function in there. And left and right delay works independently as well. I don't use it very often, but if I've got the tape plugin in already and I decide I want to add some delay effect, it's there and it's really quite useful. Having a look at the bottom section now, firstly we've got modeled tracks. Uh, it can be a little confusing because it says two, two plus three and three. What this actually means is our left and right channels and um, we're going to either be emulating the left channel or the right channel or we emulate both in stereo which is a combination of two and three. So when you load this plugin onto a stereo track, by default it chooses two over three. If you load it onto a mono track, I'm pretty sure it selects two for you and then you can adjust it from there. We've then got Wow and Flutter. So Wow and Flutter, they work hand in hand. Um, you'll see these on tape, you'll see these on vinyl emulation as well. Wow and Flutter takes in consideration for the motor not being absolutely perfect. So we get very small fluctuations in speed and amplitude. And we can adjust the rate that that's occurring and the depth at which it occurs as well. So we can really pump up the wow, for example. And we've got a whole new sound going. We can dial it right back as well and have it off. and it's not even noticeable. Now, if we dial the rate right back and the depth up quite high, we get some very interesting pitching and warping sounds. And this is because it's constantly adjusting its pace and time. And when we put that up, that's why we got that really rapid distorted sound. If we just reset the wow there back to zero. Flutter, as you can probably imagine, now does the amplitude. It's very similar to adding a tremolo effect to a synth. Next, we've got our metering with wonderful in and out. I tend to just leave it on in, and like I say, I've got that frequency area in here. Um, sorry, I've got that amplitude area in here that I just really enjoy. I find it the best for this particular plugin. 
And next we've got just a high pass and low pass, but the high pass is important. It also works hand in hand with the delay. And we've got different types of delay, which obviously corresponds to our section up here. And we can do slap, feedback, ping pong, um, whether or not we have it inserted or as a send and return as well. So useful to have it as a delay function. When you combine it with the wow and flutter, for example, it can be quite interesting. So let's just dial some in, let's sync it as well. So you can kind of abuse the J37 and get it to be a very creative plugin, but I personally just use it for some warmth and feeling and just to sort of enhance these very clean and well recorded instruments that I use to give them a bit of dirt and feel. So that's just a quick overview of the J37 and a very small look at some of the creative things you can do with it. Hope that was helpful for you guys and uh, any questions throw them in the comments down below and I will see you on the next one.